Hi. I'm really excited for today because we are going to be doing like an ultimate book day. I'm finally allowing myself to buy some new books. Not that I really need them because I do have quite a few books that I haven't read yet, but I'm just choosing to ignore that for now because I wanna go book shopping today. I'm just in the mood. When I get back, we're gonna do a haul, gonna do a bit of a reading vlog. I also kind of been toying with the idea of starting a reading journal, but I'm really not sure if I'll be able to keep up with something like that. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna go to Waterstones because I get two kinds of discounts in there and also really exciting at work we do this thing called like star of the month and i was the star of the month for march i think and as my little like present i got a 20 pound gift voucher to this queer bookshop in town it's also the start of summer so that means more reading so i kind of need more books right let's get going how long it takes me to look at books. Also, what is going on with my throat? I'm not sick. Unfortunately, it was a rushed experience for me. Apparently, four hours isn't enough to browse for books. <laughs> Let's start with the first bookshop that I went to, which is called Queer Lit. It's an independent bookshop, but they do have an online store. It's just queerlit.co.uk. And what's great about it is that the books in the shop and also online are discounted books because they want to like match Amazon's price. Both of these books that I bought say 9.99 on the book, but they were actually more like 7.99. They love to wrap it up in tissue paper and put their little sticker on the front. Also, People in there are just always really nice to me. And I had a great conversation with the person selling the books and they told me so much about the ones that I had picked up. <laughs> Let me just stop talking and actually show you. So the first book that I picked up is called Swimming in the Dark and it's by Thomas Jodrowski. I believe it's Polish. So this book is about two boys who have been sent to agricultural camp and over the summer they fall in love and then that's kind of all halted when they finish their camp and get sent back to Warsaw, which is a pretty homophobic place. This is set in 1980, so it would be even more homophobic at the time. They have to decide whether they want to continue seeing each other or to be safe. I think it's gonna remind me a little bit of Call Me By Your Name because it's like a gay romance in summer. I was gonna say it might be a bit of a beach read because it's about a summer romance, but at the same time, I think it could probably make me cry. So maybe I won't be bringing it to the beach. The bookseller did say to me that this book references Giovanni's room quite a lot. And I literally just read that last week. So kind of perfect timing because they were saying, if you haven't read that, then you won't get the references. So yeah, if you've read Giovanni's room, then you're probably gonna like this as well. 
the next book I've heard so much about on TikTok from my friends on booktube and it is called the House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. The bookseller told me that this is a kind of fantasy about children who are orphaned. The children are children of magical beasts. One of the children apparently is the child of Satan. I think the kind of whole theme of the story is about finding your chosen family. So everyone in the world has a family that they were born into and some people are very lucky with who they're born into others not so much that kind of forces people to find their chosen family the bookseller said something about there being a romance but the protagonist is asexual so so the romance doesn't include like lust or any sexual energy which i think is really interesting as someone who's not asexual like i love to read stories about it i think it's a great way to understand what it's like and how exciting tj clune actually went to queer lit and signed the book so i now have a signed edition i'm very happy now let's move on to waterstones i really wish there were more independent bookshops in manchester as much as i love waterstones i would way prefer to support like an independent shop but unfortunately there isn't they also have a student discount card and loyalty points so it's kind of really good for your money okay where do i start let's start with the buy one get one half price books that i picked up i was actually really happy with the selection this time most of the time i can't actually find two books that i want and i'm not just gonna buy a book because it's a buy one get one half price you know i want to actually want the book so the first one is called milk teeth by jessica andrews and this is about a girl who is growing up in the north of england and i think she's struggling for money and it's just a bit fearful of life and then years later she meets a man who invites her to join him in barcelona and he's offering her this life of pleasure of sun a very picture perfect life but it says that it also comes with shame maybe he's financing her life i'm not really sure i'm intrigued that was the first one from waterstones on half price and the book that i got with it i'm so excited for i've actually been waiting for it to get out of hardback because i hate hardbacks you can't take them anywhere and most of the time they're not even like prettier anyway the next book i got is called the satsuma complex by bob mortimer bob mortimer is like a tv personality on british tv so this book is about gary and brendan and they are work colleagues they go to the pub for a drink and meet brendan's friend there and then brendan leaves early so it's just gary and the girl Gary doesn't know the girl's name. So a few days later, Brendan goes missing. And so Gary has to track down this girl that he met at the pub and try and find out where Brendan is. So yeah, this is a little mystery, which you know I love, but I haven't really been reading them for a while. I also just love testing to see whether celebrities are actually good writers. So this was the other book in that little deal that I got. And then the next two books I'm really excited about. I've been searching for this book for so long. I don't know why, I just couldn't find it anywhere. But I finally found Family of Liars by E. Lockhart. I was obsessed with We Were Liars. I think I probably read We Were Liars at least five years ago now it's like had its resurgence on tiktok i'm going to have to spark notes the we were liars because i don't really remember much about it apart from i do remember the big twist at the end it doesn't really say what it's about i guess it's just following on from oh it literally says on the front the prequel to the tiktok sensation so this is perfect for me because i can't remember what happens in we were liars so <laughs> this is the prequel so i don't need to know it's just about really mega rich people and tragedy i have kind of been moving on a little bit from ya because i am 24 um but at the same time sometimes i really enjoy dipping my foot back in because they are always so easy to read compared to a little life you know or something like that and i'm just so excited to have it now i think this might even be the first book that i read <laughs> The last book that I got on the buy one get one half price was 
The Maid by Nita Prose. Again, this I've seen everywhere. And this is another little murder mystery, I believe. So it's about a maid who works in a hotel and she one day walks into one of the rooms to find one of the guests dead. So it says a very messy mystery begins to unfold and Molly is at the heart of it. And I think this kind of centers around the whole thing about how staff in hotels are kind of meant to be silent and to be there just to serve the guests. In reality, they all are so involved in all of the drama between the guests. They hear all of the whisperings. They're just cleaning in the background and they overhear conversations and stuff like that. So they know all of the secrets. I think this is gonna be a really good one. Oh God, I'm so excited for all of these books. I love this feeling. So that was the last book in the buy one get one half price deal that I did. Next, let's go on to the books that I have absolutely no clue what they're about because I really want to do a video about judging books by their covers where I literally read a book without knowing anything about it. I've only picked it up because I think the cover's really pretty. So yeah, the first book that I got is called Almond and that's by Won Pyung Son. Is this not just such a stunning cover? This is something else that I've seen on TikTok and BookTok but I actually have never listened to what the people have to say sorry so once again i have no idea what this is about and i'm not gonna read the blurb to tell you what it's about because i don't want to know yet so yeah that is the first mystery book that i've got the second book that i bought because i thought it was pretty is called watching women and girls by danielle pender i love the illustration on the front of this i think it's gorgeous yeah it's about women and girls i'm a woman and a girl <laughs> I keep trying to look at the back and I need to keep stopping myself from doing that. And then the last book that I bought because I thought it was pretty <laughs> is called Cursed Bunny. And this one is by Bora Chung and it's translated by Anton Hu. Another stunning cover. The back is gorgeous too. No idea what this is about. I'm sorry. You can look it up yourself if you really need to. Or you could do what I'm doing and have no idea what they're about and just go in two more books and then we can get on to reading and journaling this book i'm excited about because basically the story goes i was trying to find carrie soto is back by taylor jenkins reed and so i asked one of the booksellers where it was she then says we've only got it in hardback right now and like i said before i hate hardback but then she said the paperback is going to come out next month so I'm just gonna wait for that. She was like, girl, me too, I hate hardbacks, but there's this other book that I think you'll like, and that is called Songs in Ursa Major by Emma Brody. The bookseller said it was very similar to Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing, if not better. That's a big thing to say because I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. It was a connection that inspired the greatest love songs, but nothing lasts forever. So I assume it's gonna be a bit like Daisy Jones. So that was the second to last book that I bought. And the last book that I bought, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. It's about fairies and mystical, magical things. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses at the start of last year, I wanna say. So it's been a really long time since I read that. But with the way that I felt about that book, that makes me excited to read this. It is a bit of a chonk, a bit of a doorstep. I haven't read a fat book like this in a while, so it's probably gonna be a bit of a struggle for me, not gonna lie. So yeah, that is my last book that I bought. I know it's a lot. I'm trying not to be that type of booktuber who buys like hundreds of books and never reads any of them. I feel like I'm very intentional with what books I buy. The last time I bought books was before Christmas, so that's a good six months. Of not buying books i won't lie to you i do have a fair few here that i haven't read yet but i do plan to read them i'm not trying to waste books i was just in the mood to buy books it happened i can't control myself sometimes i think when i'm going through a bit of a slump it helps me to buy new books to get me re-excited about it and this definitely has i am 10 books behind on my reading goal i actually need all of these books so that i can catch up so that was my haul i hope you enjoyed i genuinely want to start a reading journal now so let's get on to that 
I bought this look from 1917 little journal. I was going to use it for a sketchbook for summer, but the pages are really thin. So I'm going to have to go and find something else for that. So I can still use this for my reading journal. I don't really know how to do a reading journal. I guess like you just do whatever you want. But I kind of had this thought. A lot of people stick in like pictures or printouts of the book cover but because i'm an illustration student i feel like i should draw them instead so i kind of want to do this thing where on one side i'll draw the book and then on the other side i'll do a little review i think that's just gonna be a really fun way to document everything that i'm reading it will also make me more present with my books i am definitely the type of person who will read a book finish it and immediately start another one it's because there are so many books out there and i just i really want to read them all but i know i can't so i need to start trying to slow down and actually like be present with the books there are some people on booktube and booktok who read a book a day I, like i genuinely don't understand how they're processing the story properly a lot of people speed read and i'm like are you really enjoying yourself if you're reading that fast maybe they just have stronger brains than i do but i can't compute what's happening if i try and speed read anyway basically i just want to start a journal so that i can be more mindful about everything that i'm reading so yeah this is her she's really pretty a really nice green i think i'm going to leave a few spreads at the front to add in all of the books that i've already read this year i think i'm gonna make the spread for the next book that i want to read just to get me excited the first book that i want to read is this one i don't know how to do it like do i do the whole page as the book or should i draw the book like as I see it and then maybe when I'm done I could add some more little drawings about like images that I had in my mind. Eee! This makes me so excited. done is very basic anyone could do this little setup i'm going to add to it after i've read the book obviously as you can see i've drawn the book and i'm going to watercolor it in a second because as you can see it's kind of like a bit of a blurry picture i think watercolors would look good for that so i'll do that and then i've left space around it so that i can draw pictures of things that stuck out to me after I've read it. And then on this side, I've just got the title, author. After I've read the book, I will color in the amount of stars that I think it is. And then I've just got a section for a synopsis, my feelings, good and bad about it, and then any favorite quotes. The main thing that I wanna focus on for this little reading journal is that it's for fun. It's not to look super pretty. I don't need it to be perfect because in the past I've done bullet journals where I've just stopped after like three months because I put loads of pressure on myself to make it look really pretty all the time that's not what this is about i think i'm gonna start reading this book it's a really lovely day outside so i think i'm gonna go and sit on the grass i'm so happy and so excited right now
clearly evening time now. I've kind of half set up my reading journal. Like I've put in all of the writing parts for all of the books that I've read this year. I just haven't decorated them or like drawn the front covers yet. And yeah, I've read some more of this and I'm still like in the part where, you know, they like kind of set the scene tell you who everyone is so i feel like i'm just about to jump into like the tragedy and the mystery i'm excited to read all of these books and tell you what i think about them and if you want you can follow me on my socials instagram tiktok blah 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 to get like behind the scenes of stuff and first glimpses because like i did post on my tiktok a little shop with me vlog before i posted this video so tiktok kind of sees everything first i am super tired now and i've got work tomorrow so i'm going to read like 10 more pages and then go to bed thank you for watching this video i'll see you in my next one bye